let's discuss problem number 3 on asymptotic notations here is the problem let fn gn and hn be functions defined for positive integers such that fn is big o of gn gn is not big o of fn gn is big o of hn and hn is big o of gn which one of the following statements is false these are all the statements available to us we need to identify which of these statements is false is it statement a fn plus gn equal to big o of hn plus hn is it statement b fn equal to big o of hn is it statement c hn not equal to big o of fn or is it statement d fn times hn not equal to big o of gn times hn in order to solve this problem the best way according to me is to assume some fn gn and hn and in this way we can easily find which of these statements is false now let us assume some fn gn and hn but can we assume fn gn and hn randomly no we cannot according to this question we need to assume some fn gn and hn according to these conditions here we have a total of four conditions and based on these conditions we can assume some fn gn and hn let's see what these conditions are trying to say here we have fn equal to big o of gn here we have gn not equal to big o of fn these two conditions are establishing the relationship between fn and gn and what about the last two conditions these two conditions are trying to establish the relationship between gn and hn here we have gn equal to big o of hn and here we have hn equal to big o of gn so now let's try to assume fn gn and hn based on these conditions let's take the first condition first here we have fn equal to big o of gn what do we mean by this equality fn equal to big o of gn means that gn can be asymptotically bigger than fn or it can be asymptotically equal to fn this is what we learned about the big o notation gn is the upper bound of fn therefore gn can be asymptotically bigger than fn or it can be asymptotically equal to fn what can we say about this condition gn not equal to big o of fn we cannot assume fn and gn based on this condition only as we also have this condition which is also trying to establish the relationship between fn and gn we need to take this condition also into account here we have gn not equal to big o of fn what can we say about this this inequality is saying that fn cannot be asymptotically bigger than gn and also it cannot be asymptotically equal to gn now if we want to assume some fn and gn then both these conditions must be satisfied according to this condition fn and gn can be asymptotically equal and according to this condition gn and fn or we can say fn and gn cannot be asymptotically equal as both these conditions must be satisfied therefore fn and gn cannot be asymptotically equal so what we are left with according to this equality gn can be asymptotically bigger than fn and according to this inequality fn cannot be asymptotically bigger than gn it is fine for us we want this this clearly means gn is asymptotically bigger than fn and that too strictly bigger than fn so one thing is clear from these two conditions that gn must be asymptotically bigger than fn and fn and gn cannot be asymptotically equal let us assume fn as n and gn as n square if you assume fn as n and gn as n square then these two conditions will be satisfied because n and n square are not asymptotically equal 
Also, n square is asymptotically bigger than n. So, we can assume fn as n and gn as n square. Both these conditions are satisfied. Now, what about the last two conditions? gn is big O of hn and hn is big O of gn. gn is big O of hn means hn can be asymptotically bigger than gn or it can be asymptotically equal to gn. What about hn equal to big O of gn? From this, we can deduce that gn can be asymptotically bigger than hn or it can be asymptotically equal to hn. From these two conditions, one thing is clear that hn cannot be asymptotically greater than gn and at the same time smaller than gn. Also, gn cannot be asymptotically bigger than hn and asymptotically smaller than hn at the same time. So, we are left with only one possibility that both gn and hn are asymptotically equal. So, if gn is big O of hn and if hn is also big O of gn, then this means that both gn and hn are asymptotically equal. We have already assumed that gn is n square, therefore we can assume hn also n square as both gn and hn must be asymptotically equal, so we can assume hn as n square. If both gn and hn are n square, then these two conditions will be satisfied. So, we have satisfied all the four conditions and accordingly we have assumed some fn, gn and hn. We have assumed that fn is n, gn is n square and hn is also n square. Now, we are completely ready to find out, out of these statements, which of the statement is false. So, let's do this. Let's take one statement at a time and let's try to find whether the statement is false or not. Let's take statement A first. fn plus gn is big O of hn plus hn. What can we say about this statement? We have assumed fn as n, gn as n square and hn as n square. Now, if we put fn as n, gn as n square and hn as n square in this statement, then we will get n plus n square equal to big O of n square plus n square as the result. Here we have n plus n square in the left hand side and in the right hand side we have n square plus n square. Can we say n square plus n square is asymptotically bigger or asymptotically equal to n plus n square? Clearly, n square plus n square is bigger than n plus n square. In this expression, n is added to n square. And in this expression, n square is added to n square. So, it is clear that n square plus n square is bigger than n plus n square. And hence, we can say, this statement or this equality is true. Therefore, we can say statement A is not false and hence this is not the correct option. Now, let's move to statement B. Statement B is saying that fn is big O of hn. Can we say this statement is false? Let's find out. We have already assumed fn is n, gn is n square and hn is n square. Here we have fn and hn. Let's replace fn by n and hn by n square and let's see whether this statement is false or not. If we replace fn by n and hn by n square, we will get n equal to big O of n square. Now, what can we say about this equality? These two are polynomial functions and the growth rate of n square is greater than the growth rate of n. Therefore, n is big O of n square. This equality is true. So, clearly we cannot select this statement. This is not false. Let's move to statement C. Here we have hn not equal to big O of fn. What can we say about this inequality? Let's replace fn by n and hn by n square. We will get n square not equal to big O of n. This statement is absolutely correct. We know that n is big O of n square. 
but n square is not big O of n. So, this inequality is also true and hence, this option is also not the correct option. Let's move to statement D. Here we have fn times hn not equal to big O of gn times hn. Let's replace fn by n, hn by n square and gn by n square. We will get n times n square not equal to big O of n square times n square. What can we say about this inequality? Here we have n times n square, this is equal to n cube. And here we have n square times n square, this is equal to n to the power 4. So here we are getting n cube not equal to big O of n to the power 4. Can we say this inequality is correct? No, this inequality is false. Why? n cube is big O of n to the power 4. n to the power 4 is asymptotically bigger than n to the power 3. Therefore, we cannot say that n cube is not equal to big O of n to the power 4. This inequality is false. Hence, option D is the correct option. This statement is false. fn times hn not equal to big O of gn times hn is false. So, with this, we are done with this problem. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.